Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 3 with another exhibition match stream. Starting tonight with a match between Venom, 69, and Sabilac. And it's gonna be on Intersection. So let's. Not much more to say to that. I have cast these players before, but they are not players I'm not familiar with. So I don't know their styles offhand too well. And that's what we'll find out tonight, to an extent. So let's get started. Venom, in the northwest corner of the map. Going for heavy max. Yeah, is that that's not Oh there we go, okay, jump out factory. So Venom going for jump out factory while Sabilac is going for the more typical and orthodox light vehicle factory. Gotta say I'm a little surprised at the jump out factory there, but to be honest, not that surprised. Jump bots are Jump bots are quite good. I mean this This map, it's a little bit harder for them to be useful than say Ravage. Like Ravage would be a map where I'd say, yeah, jump bots, go for it. You'll win. Or, well, it necessarily win, but it will work. This map, it can work, because there are places to jump, and you could jump up this section here. This is a cliff right here, and there's also cliffs around back. Kind of cliffy bits right here if you want to jump onto the ramp and then keep going. But overall, this is a much more pathable map than Ravaged is. Far fewer choke points, far more places that vehicles in particular can actually get around. So... Jump bots don't quite have the same terrain advantage as they do in... Although this area here is purely bot pathable unless you can get up the top. So not as many terrain advantages as Ravaged, but... Still pretty good. Anyway, Venom... Just focusing entirely on economy has... Actually about to lose their radar! There we go, radar is down and... That was a bit of a shame because that wasn't anything they were working on. And one of the metal extractors also about to go down. That dart not being stopped by the... Freaker here. Freaker is not doing its job. Well, okay, this is doing its job, but it can only slow. Cannot kill. And down goes another metal extractor. Say, like, on the other hand, their entire base is filled up. They have wind generators. They have their factory going, and it's just going. So they're good. They're doing fine. And with that, a couple Scorchers coming in to basically be the second round in here. Dart's just about to get finished up, and down. There's the second metal extractor down. Both metal extractors going down for Venom. They only have the five metal and well, five metal ish from the commander and the factory, which is basically four and a half. And that is not really doing them a whole lot of good, unfortunately. However, Puppy is finishing off the dart, not the most cost effective way of getting rid of that. While a Scorcher comes in to show why the puppy really was not best suited to getting rid of the dart. Does damage the Scorcher a bit, but really the commander needs to be going back and dealing with this. These workers Unfortunately getting killed, but yeah, the commander going back in the base to help with this. To actually build up the base while the workers go off. On their own. If the engineers went off on their own, I don't think Sebilac would have spotted them, wouldn't have killed them. But at this point, they're both quite dead. So that's rather unfortunate. But that is the way it goes. And yes, Carapera. Carapera is chatting. Now, at the same time, more Venom is going for retaliation attack. Pyro taking out a couple, well, one Metal Strider so far. Second one going down. And Wind Generators going down as well. Pretty much all of them are going to go down, as long as Venom is paying attention to this, which they aren't. Okay, they are sort of. They're kind of jumping back and forth, but... They have gotten rid of the wind generators, getting rid of the metal extractor, so it's not... At least for Venom, not completely... Done yet. They still have a bit of a chance. Sibulac has lost all but one metal extractor, still ahead for metal, behind for energy. While, on the other hand, Venom has... Still, still has their solar collectors, rebuilding the metal extractors, reclaiming a bit. So Venom is actually doing okay. They should be building with this though, that's the one problem. They are getting a bunch of metal in reserve and they're starting to get close to flooding. And they're actually building in units at the same time. And that Pyro, still doing a good job though. It's gonna get knocked down by the Defender and one more Defender shot. Oh, no, not quite. The Pyro is still alive. My mistake. We had that Pyro finishing off another Mason. The Defender will finish this off before it killed the Mason though. There we go. There, it's dead. Although the Mason may still burn to death. Yeah, I think the Mason is gonna burn to death. That 40, 30, 20, 10, and is dead! So that Mason still goes down. Sebulak took quite a lot of damage from that, and Venom using the time given to them to basically rebuild. Rebuilding everything from here, and there was a puppy on watch to get rid of the Scorch, but really not the most efficient unit to put in there. Puppies are not that cost effective. However, that was still enough. That still gave Venom 69's commander some time to kill the Scorcher before any damage was done, really. So that worked out overall, and Sibulac now having to rebuild themselves, and they are very nearly done that, but... Venom is slightly ahead. Venom's managed to actually pull ahead on this one. So Sibulac does have a lot of reclaim fodder, that's one thing to point out. 
Sebi Lag has more that was built and more to be reclaimed than Venom did. Although, to be honest, well, yeah, yeah, 56 medals not that big of a deal anyway. So I guess it's not that important. Still, Venom does have a slight upper hand at this point. Although Sebi Lag deciding, you know what? Forget going for Scorchers then, I'm going to go for Levelers. Which will be a big pain in the butt for those Pyros, because... Well, okay, mostly because of the fact that the Pyros can't easily avoid them. So between the Slashers and the Levelers, those Pyros are going to have a much harder time moving around and actually dealing the damage they need to. Well, Sebulak continues to build up with that, and will be building Scorchers later on. There isn't their queue. They just... They're just waiting for the Masons and Slashers before that comes up. Well, on the other hand, Venom, once again, not building a lot of units. I guess... They really just want to be hyper-efficient in building up metal extractors, but not sure what's going to work out. The Slasher does go down with the Levelers here to save the day. A little late, but still, they are going to work. Pushing the Pyros away, getting them out of the range slightly, and also just hitting them quickly enough. It deals enough damage, doesn't have to stay in range. Can go hit and run, and doesn't have to worry about the Pyro jumping away from the shot, because the shot is too fast. The Levelers coming in to get rid of the base, and this will actually not work especially well. It gets rid of the metal extractor, but Pyro's coming in, the Levelers are on reload. Doesn't actually make a difference. So, no, never mind. This is working out okay. The Lotus has just dealt a lot of damage, though. That's one and a half Levelers going down to the Lotuses. The Pyro didn't actually do that much, so Levelers definitely the best choice. I was pretty sure of that before, but definitely sure of that now. Levelers taking care of another Lotus, however, one of them is going to go down in the process, and the Commander not making that easy. In fact, the Lotus is not going to go down. Both Levelers getting killed in the process. They'd be like just donating metal right there. Right to Venom. Venom loves that, I'm sure. So, Venom gets, and that gets a slight economic advantage as a result, and is producing more units, mostly Pyros. I would recommend getting a few Moderators as well, although, actually no, I think Jax would be a better option. Moderators are nice for the range, and range units usually beat levelers, but I'm, I'd have to double check the speeds. Because levelers, although mainly Scorchers are what's coming up now, and that won't work out well for for the Skirmisher at all, for moderators. Let's see, so we have 2.2 speed here, and... We have... Yeah, okay, so moderators would not be able to kite the levelers. Moder moderators have 1.9 speed, levelers have 2.2. That will be a problem if modders use, however, they're not. Pyros are what's being used, and that will be okay against this, the Scorchers. There are Scorchers coming up, and then Levelers on top of that. So ultimately, Sebulak's still pretty well prepared for the Pyros. But Venom just has too much defenses. Trying to assault with the Levelers is not the best idea. Ravagers are what you want to do for assault. Levelers, not so much. And the Pyro might be able to beat the Lotus. Pyros can actually beat Lotuses one-on-one, -on -one, but it's a just barely thing, and as you can see, that really was just barely. Burns to death afterwards. Mutual death. However, second Pyro coming in to follow up, and that will be quite successful. Sebulax Commander coming in to try to defend, and, well, she's trying to reclaim, which will ultimately help with defense, but, well, okay, won't help with defense because that Metal Extractor is going down way too fast, and Solar Collector going down as well. In fact, that the Solar Collector is going down means Sebulax does have a bit of time, this Pyro may not be able to get out of there in time. Actually, no, it's not going to because Venom is not moving it. Venom paying more attention to... Oh, well, okay, now they're moving it, but they're paying more attention to their main base. And that Pyro does not, unfortunately, do too much. Damages the commander a bit, but that'll heal. That'll be recovered. It's got a beam laser, but no auto repair system. Still, it'll heal. At the same time, Venom trying to get rid of... Sorry, Sebi trying to get rid of Venom's base, and Venom actually does lose another Metal Extractor, so it's still kind of even. In terms of economic harassment, both players are kind of even. Though this Solar Collector is not going to go down, unlike Sebulax, which did, as we saw, go down completely. And Sebulax going for placeholders instead, that's also a good idea. Although, not the not as good of an idea. I mean, it's... Against the Scorchers is a good idea. Definitely. But... That's actually a bit of a bad read. Because they are assuming Scorchers when it is going to be Levelers and... Well, Levelers and Slashers. And Levelers and Slashers won't be affected too much. I think the Slashers might be. I'm actually not sure. But the Levelers won't be. The Levelers will be fine. Because the Pyros have to be pretty close anyway. However, the Pyros, speaking to them, getting rid of the northeast side. Sebi like once again, losing their base. Like, Venom is just doing a really nice job harassing around the map. Does need to get the southwest, though, but still making sure Sebi like can't really get up. In the economy race. 
However, at the same time, Sebulike is also not having to worry too much because Venom isn't pushing too much themselves. I mean, if this worker goes over here to the northeast and takes the Metallic Strategist, then there'll be some concern. But for the moment, not really. And even then, with this leveler here, that won't even be a concern. But the fact is, Venom is not expanding as quickly as Sebulike is, despite the fact that Sebulike is being harassed a fair amount. Sebulike isn't being harassed as much as they need to be for Venom to really catch up. So Venom is still in not the best position. Needs a bit more work here. Probably best if Venom were to simply... I'm gonna try to get rid of these slashers, push through the center, get... Because the center max isn't much more valuable. But as long as they can protect... Even just to get one side, actually. Just get this side over the northeast. But that's not gonna work out too well. There are some pyros going over there to try to take it. And there's not much else. No workers. The Freaker here not moving up as well. Venom does have no knowledge of what's going on there. No radar knowledge at all. Knows about the leveler because they did see it kill their forces, but otherwise, no knowledge of that. And the placeholder is here. Is taking out one of the levelers, but still, like I said, the slashers doesn't matter. Slashers able to harass a bit. And Venom is... Venom is going to have somewhat of a tough time here. I think there isn't enough. I think, like I said, Venom just going pure pyro means that Sebulite can easily counter this, and has been countering it so far, and Venom not been really addressing the levelers and slashers. The placeholder is, like I said, okay, but not great, and otherwise, it's just been pure pyro. And once again, more pyro spam coming in. Like, Jax would probably be a good idea right about now, actually. Especially against the slasher, because the slasher has to be stationary, and Jax can just tank all the damage coming in. But no, that's not what's happening at all. We're seeing pure pyro. Which, once again, going for another raid over the northeast, and going into the main base, probably prematurely, there is a leveler here, and that's... Well, actually, it is going to spot them. Right. That is going to be spot... Oh, no, it's not actually... No, they're getting around it! Jumping into the base, the leveler is slightly out of position, and that's just slightly enough, although it looks like a couple pyros will go down and one shot... That's what I mean. Levelers, that's what they do. They kill large masses of raiders. And they do that well. Although, admittedly, down goes that lotus, but still, no follow-up force. So Venom not going to be able to take advantage of that. Going to the southwest as well, but there's six defenders up here. Yeah, that's not going to work out too well at all. Pyros are going to go down, and this is where... Well, actually, that's where a Sumo would be very handy. Or Firewalker, maybe, but that's pushing a bit much. I think a Jack would be enough. But I don't think Venom's ever going to go for this game. I seriously doubt it. Looks like they're just trying to push heavy Pyro, and at this point, the amount of Pyros they built... A couple Jacks could have been built, and the defenders are coming in, and they're getting rid of the Pyros without any issue. Another Pyro gonna try to follow up, but by the time it comes in, all the defenders will have reloaded. Nope, not even bothering. Not even bothering. Venom knows that's a bad idea. Backs away from there, and turns back to the center of the map, which Sebulike has handily taken. I mean, Sebulike does have 2,000 metal advantage on Venom. Pretty much double the... Pretty much, no, actually, triple the army when you take out the metal... When you take out the metal cost of the commanders. Like, 1250 each, so it's actually more like... 2,000 to... Okay, it is double. Yeah, it's still 2,000 to 5,000, effectively. Without the commanders involved. Sorry, 2,000 to 4,000. That is... a big difference. And when you consider that Sebulike basically has... pretty much type counters on Venom. There isn't much of a way that Venom can get out of here, and Sebulike just expanding... taking the rest of the map, and will be pushing that into an airplane factory. And that airplane factory will then be used just to bomb out everything else. Yeah, we have Ravens coming up. That's the first and only thing being built out of that airplane factory. And Sebulike, having to well, reposition slightly, but these slashers, once they get into range, once they get a bit of vision, like Sebulike does actually have radar of this, does have vision of this as well. These slashers are slightly out of range, but Sebulike could put them in range. Just the, that Scorcher, sorry, the Scorcher, the, pff, the Stinger. Man, even the defensive building just screwed me up. The Stinger is still in range. Uh, they're actually... are they even range? Let's see, range 600, range of 620. No, the Stinger has a slightly higher range. <laughs> yeah, Carr, you're right. Now that's because, well... Venom is a player. I'd actually have to say Venom 69 every time if one of them was playing spiders. But that is not the case. And what is the case where Venom is going over to the northeast side of the map. The level are going to be quite useful here. Gets... A massive amount of damage on those pyros, and the rest of the pyros coming in, trying to get rid of the lotuses, might be able to get rid of one, maybe. Yeah, he gets rid of one, 
damages a second. Oh, it gets rid of a second. Won't be able to finish off this third, though. That will kill it first, and it won't even burn to death. That, this Lotus is fine, as is this base. And all this reclaim belongs to Sebulak. Although, I should point out, we are kind of in the stage of the game where reclaims the next thing Sebulak has, needs to do. But then again, Sebulak's commander is right there, so it's perfect. And how much... Wow, how much... There is a thousand metal worth of reclaim in this section right here. All for Sebulak. All for him. Eats it all up. Make some nice new buildings with it, or nice new units. Like, getting a lot of... I mean, okay, there's four ravens so far. Fifth being produced. I don't know if they're going for the comm kill, because Venom's commander does... Oh, actually, no, wow, it's even worse. Venom's commander is worth 2150. That means it's only about 900 in army. Yes, 2500 HP, okay, fine, that's four ravens. Which is exactly what Sebulak has, and there it goes! There it goes! We do have the comm kill coming up. And Venom's commander is about to go down. And there it goes! Blows right up. Blows up real good. And with that, Venom, basically, we see how much army value they actually have. And it's not promising. Because they've been focusing way too much on ratings for this entire game. Have not really been focusing on building up the higher level. Okay, now we'll finally get Firewalkers, but at this point, Archangels will be a better option. But still, Venom has not been building enough to really push out. And this is too little too late with the Firewalker. The Firewalker is going to get bombed out. It's going to be a couple of Ravens are going to come in and take out that Firewalker, and that'll be it. That'll probably actually end the game outright. I think Venom just surrender at that point. But we'll see. They are trying to get rid of some of these defenses. No follow-up forces, though. I... Wait, really? No follow-up forces? At all? Huh. I wonder if that army counter is slightly off for metal, because that's 1,200 metal for the Firewalker. And... That's apparently it. Okay. Well, that's surprising. Oh, never mind. There's the placeholder there. This doesn't count for everything. Maybe Freakers count as damage, or... Do Freakers count? Yeah, I guess Freakers do count. Okay, apparently Freakers count as an offensive unit, despite the fact that they only deal slow damage. And there goes the Firewalker doing what it can, and there come the Venoms to finish it off. Yep, there it goes. Two Venoms. Sorry, two Venoms. <laughs> two Ravens. Sheesh. The fact that Venom is the only thing named Venom in the game right now still doesn't cease to confuse me. Ah, uh, whatever. Anyway, Ravens are coming in. One of the Ravens... No, none of the Ravens go down! Two of them are heavily damaged, but... None went down. Very close, though. Within 50 health of their life, but still... I want to say within an inch of their life? No, it's within a millimeter of their life, if you look at the health bar. Still... Sebulak so far ahead, it doesn't matter. Sebulak could push. Sebulak should push. The Stinger's Burn is the only thing in the way, and bombing that out will... be fairly easy. Four Ravens each. Not a big deal. This one, though, the one that's within... Okay, a couple millimeters of its life. Oh, it's healing up. Okay. That one will need to be... brought in... after repairs. It needs to go to repairs first. Actually, an airplane pla Airplane pad. That's what's necessary right now. There needs to be an airplane pad. I don't know why Sebulak is not building one of those, but they have... They've got enough Ravens to justify it. That would... That basically allow them to get rid of the stingers within a minute. Like, all the stingers would go down within a minute if Sebulak had an air repair pad. Yes! Someone actually got the reference! Awesome! Okay, I didn't expect anyone would actually get that reference watching my show, but yes, apparently other people have seen SCTV in their lives. And Carper had to go point that out, but yeah, I... That was a good show. That was a really good show. But, anyway, that aside, we... have... Well, Archangels. That's something. A little too late, though. As you can see, like I said. Oh, not just going for the Stingers, just going for everything. Mainly Defenders, which is actually not a bad choice. Because the Stingers are far less accurate than those Defenders are. Defenders are going to be the big problem for the Bombers, and, well, they aren't a problem anymore. Not at all. I mean, there's a dozen Ravens coming in as well, and the rest of them just going in to finish off the Stinger. And with that, I imagine, Sebulak will go in for the kill. Actually, I'm going to speed it up slightly, because this is... This is kind of a foregone conclusion. Venom simply not gone in and actually finished it off. And there we go. There's the airplane plant. Or airplane pad. And there's also what looks like final attack. Another bomber coming in here and nothing to repair. Archangels are in place. Actually, three Archangels are in place. It's going to be a bit harder for the bombers to get through. But even then, once those go down, it's just a matter of... Oh, hey, Wolverines. Never mind. So yeah, the Archangels... 
actually gonna take out a couple bombers, probably. Looks like no, not even, not even taking out the bombers, going down themselves, being the main targets, and the stinger also goes down, killing their counter. That's what Arianus do, and Venom throws in the towel. That's not even a GG, it just surrenders. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll have another one for you guys in just a moment. It will be a game between Forever and someone who's apparently Forever Smurf. Not sure how that happens. I'm calling time travel. Yeah, Forever, and I know you read this on Avalanche. So I'll be up in just a moment. Stay tuned.